Okay, in this video we're going to look at evaluating triple integrals and rectangular coordinates. So to start with, we need an extension of Fubini's theorem from double integrals to triple integrals. So our textbook doesn't explicitly state this theorem, but this would be how you might state that theorem. If f of x, y, z, so that's the function that we're going to be integrating, if f of x, y, z is continuous, on a closed and bounded region D then, and I have parts A, B, and C here. You can just see parts A and B right now. I'll scroll up and do C in a, in a bit here, but it says that that triple integral of the function over the region D is equal to, all right, and then we want to look at this notation here. What we've got is an integral inside another integral. So this inner integral, we'll notice, has DZ, and we're going to do that if our region D is Z simple. So the idea here with z simple is just that we're going to extend what it would mean for a region to be x simple or y simple from two dimensions to three dimensions. So I'm going to draw just an example of a region that would be z simple here. So I'm going to imagine that maybe I have a paraboloid that opens up and then maybe another paraboloid or maybe a part of a sphere or something. I'll just draw a part of a paraboloid here that opens down and so they intersect at some edge here. And so I'd have this paraboloid on top and then a different paraboloid on the bottom. And that would be a region that is Z simple because when I go through that region in the direction of increasing Z, I'm always entering through the same surface, so the paraboloid that opens up, and then I'm also always leaving through the same surface. So that would be an example of a region that's Z simple. And so if I have a z-simple region, I've got dz on the inner integral here, and the z equals g of xy, just like we did for double integrals, that would be the surface where you enter. So we go through the region in the direction of increasing z. Your lower limit of integration would be where you enter the region. So whatever the equation of that surface is, you need it solved for z. And then the h of xy, the upper limit of integration would be where you leave the region as you go through the region in the direction of increasing z. So that inner integral it is, is a dz integral and then outside of that we've got a dA and a double integral over some r with a subscript of xy. So let's read a little bit more about what that says. It says that g and h need to be continuous functions with surfaces Okay, so that's similar to what we did with Fubini's theorem. And then the other part that it says here is r of xy is the projection of d into the xy plane. Our book describes this, but it does not give it that notation r xy until actually chapter 16. It starts using that kind of notation. But the idea here is that you want to look at the projection or the shadow of our three-dimensional region that we're integrating over down into the xy plane, and that would be your r xy. So just like when we did double integrals, once we set up that inner limit of integration, we were able to collapse it back in the direction of the variable we had already set it up in. And that's the same idea here. Once you set up that dz integral, you go through the region in the direction of increasing z, then you can collapse it back and look at this region, r xy region, to set up those outer limits of integration. So you would need to go ahead and set those up, but at that point then you could look at a two-dimensional picture just of what that region might look like in the xy plane and set up those outer limits of integration using what you already know about double integrals. Okay, so the same idea that we have down here for part B. Uh, again, if our function is continuous on our region, this one is about a y-simple region g and h being continuous, and then our outer integral is set up over a region that is a projection of the three-dimensional region into the xz plane. So I'll draw a little picture of that. All right, so if I have a y-simple region, that would mean a region that when I go through the, the region in the direction of increasing y, I'm always entering and leaving through the same surfaces. So probably the easiest thing to draw here is something similar to what I drew for the other one two paraboloids that are kind of opening in opposite directions and intersect there. And so you've got one paraboloid opening in the positive y direction 
and then a different paraboloid opening in the negative y direction. If you go through that region in the direction of increasing y, wherever you enter would be your lower limits of integration, and where you leave would be your upper limit of integration. And then once you've set up that inner integral, again, you can project back into the plane of the variables that you haven't dealt with yet. So you'd look at the image or the shadow of that region back into the coordinate plane for the variables you haven't dealt with yet. And then you'd go ahead and set up those outer integrals based on just that two-dimensional picture in an XZ plane, whatever the, the region looks like, and use the boundary equations of that two-dimensional region to set that up. So what this allows you to do is once you get that inner integral set up, it kind of goes back to what you already know about double integrals. This third one here, I'm probably not going to draw a picture for it, but says if our region is x simple, then we're going to put dx on the inner integral. Again, this lower limit of integration will be where you enter the region, and the upper limit of integration would be where you leave the region d when you go through in the direction of increasing x. And then the ryz would be the projection of that three-dimensional solid into the yz plane. Okay, so basically you're just going to get that inner integral set up okay and then you can go to a two-dimensional picture. We're going to look at an example here where we're going to just set up iterated triple integrals in three ways. So when we talk about setting up an iterated triple integral, what I want here is all of my limits of integration completely set up. Sometimes I ask questions like this on an exam because really what I'm interested in is knowing that you know how to set up the integral and sometimes I ask a question or two asking you to actually do the integration, but setting up the integral is often the more tricky part. And so a lot of times on exams, I'll ask you to just set up the triple integrals. Okay, so we're supposed to set up iterated triple integrals in three ways for this integral that we're given here. Uh, our function is continuous everywhere, continuous on all of our three. So Fubini's theorem tells us we really just need to think about the geometry of the region and the continuity of the functions that form the boundaries of our region. Some of the problems that you do with triple integrals will have the region that you're integrating over drawn for you, and some won't. So I'm doing an example here where we don't have the region drawn just so you can practice a little bit refreshing those surfaces. For the ones where the picture is not drawn, you should expect that those equations of those surfaces are all fairly straightforward. If you look at these equations here, these are fairly easy compared to some of the more complicated graphs that we drew when we were first doing three-dimensional graphing. Uh, this first one, z equals y squared, is a cylinder. It's missing x, so it's a cylinder that extends along the x-axis. And then the other three surfaces are all planes that are parallel to the xy plane, xz plane, or yz plane. All right, so I'm going to start by drawing this cylinder. You don't have to have a work of art here for your picture, but you do need to have a picture that's good enough that you can think about going through that region in the direction of increasing x, increasing y, or increasing z. All right, so when I draw that cylinder, I want to think about the generating curve, which would be in the yz plane. So that would be the parabola, z equals y squared, and so you need to think about, does that open on the z-axis or open on the y-axis? So if you don't know, maybe you think back to the parabola y equals x squared, that you probably do know what that graph looks like. That opens on the y-axis, and so you can think about that a little bit. You could also plug in some numbers when y is, say, 2 or negative 2, z will be 4. And so you can get that generating curve. So I've got a parabola in the yz plane that opens in the positive z direction with vertex at the origin. And that surface is really a cylinder, so that extends really forward and backward in the x direction. So that cylinder really extends upward and forward and backward, but I don't really want the entire cylinder. I want a region bounded by all these. The other important thing to remember about this is that the picture of your region should be closed and bounded. And this region that I have drawn so far is not bounded. It's going off to infinity. So if I haven't drawn a closed and bounded region, it's possible that I haven't thought about all of the surfaces that they told me to think about. So I do have some others here that I need to think about. z equals 4 is a plane up here at z equals 4 that is parallel to the xy plane. 
So when I think about that plane, z equals 4, that's basically going to form a top of our region. I'm not going to draw the whole plane, z equals 4, just a part of it here that would form the top of our region. And then I have two more planes, x equals 0 and x equals 4. So x equals 0 would be the yz plane. So that would be back here on the back side. I wouldn't be able to see it if the surfaces here were not transparent. And x equals 4 would be a plane that comes out here to 4 in the positive x direction is parallel to the yz plane. So that plane, if I think about the whole plane, x equals 4, it would be a whole plane there. But I really just want the part that bounds off this solid that I'm looking here. So right here, this part that would be on the front side of our solid. Okay, so I need a good enough picture here that I can think about this region, whether it's x simple, y simple, or z simple, and where it enters and where it leaves so that I can set up my limits of integration. So if I'm going to set this up with dx on the inner integral, I first of all need to think about going through this region in the direction of increasing x. So if I go through the region in the direction of increasing x all through the region, I'm always going to be entering through x equals 0, and then I'm going to leave through this plane in the front that would be where x equals 4. So for part a, I'm going to set up my inner limits of integration first, x equals 0 to 4. Don't forget the function that you're integrating. And then I need to set up my outer limits of integration, which will be in terms of the two variables I haven't done yet. So if I think about collapsing that region back into the yz plane, my advice is to draw a new picture here. What I'm going to get if I collapse that solid, that three-dimensional solid, back into the yz plane is this little part that would be along the back there. And so I need to set up my outer limits of integration based on that. So I need to think about whether I want to do y or z next. So I'm going to look at this region. I'm going to think about if is, is it y simple or is it z simple. This one is both. So I can do that in either order. I'm going to set this up with z on my next integral here. It's probably a little bit easier. When I go through this region in the direction of increasing z, I'm entering through this parabola. That parabola comes from the equation of our cylinder. So that parabola is z equals y squared. And then I'm going to leave through this line across the top, which is where z equals 4. OK, after I've got dz set up, then the next thing I want to think about is one more layer for integration here. So I can think about, again, collapsing this back into the variable that's left. So every time, once I set up one integral, I can collapse back into the remaining variables. So for the y's, I need to think about this shadow along the y-axis and where we're going to go from minimum to maximum value. So for that one, you're going to have to do a little bit of work. I need to think about these points where those y values would be when z equals 4 intersects z equals y squared. That's pretty easy to do in your head. So my y values will go from negative 2 to 2. OK, I have set this triple integral up using x equals, y equals, and z equals on my limits of integration. Those are not necessary. And so it's OK to put them there. But generally, you would probably see it in a textbook written without those. OK, so that's part A. And then for part B, I'm going to use my same solid, set that up with dy on the inner integral. All right, so for that one, I want to go back to my three-dimensional picture. I want to think about going through the region in the direction of increasing y, through that three-dimensional solid in the direction of increasing y. And when I do that, I'll be entering along the left side of the parabolic cylinder and then leaving through the right side of the parabolic cylinder. So when I do part B here, I'm going to enter through the left side of the parabolic cylinder and leave through the right side of the parabolic cylinder. So I need that equation of that parabolic cylinder, z equals y squared, solved for y. All right, and then once I have set that up in the y direction, I want to think about collapsing that region back into the xz plane. So this is where you have to have kind of good spatial visualization to think about that. When I collapse that thing back into the xz plane, I'm basically going to get this rectangular region that is the shadow in the xz plane. So I'm going to draw that on my two-dimensional graph here. So x will go from 0 to 4, 
and z will also go from 0 to 4, that rectangle or square region really there. All right, so that's a square. Squares are easy to set up limits of integration. It doesn't matter what order you do those in. You're going to have constants for all your limits of integration. So I'll just do x next and then z. Okay, and then one more to do here. I need to set this up with dz on the inner integral. All right, so going back to my three-dimensional solid here. All right, so when I go through that thing in the direction of increasing z, I'm always entering through the parabolic cylinder z equals y squared, and then I'm leaving through the plane z equals 4. And then to finish setting that up, I need to look at the projection of that region down into the xy plane. So I want to think about the shadow of that region. And my three-dimensional solid, the widest part of that is going to be this rectangle that I have here across the top. And so that's going to be what forms my shadow down in the xy plane. So we imagine this whole solid being projected just flattened down into the xy plane. I'm going to get that rectangle. And so I want to be careful about my axes here and draw that correctly. So y is going to go from negative 2 to 2 and x is going to go from 0 to 4 in that xy plane. All right, so when I set up those limits of integration here, again, it's a rectangle, so it doesn't really matter what order you do. I'm just going to do x and then y. Okay, and then if you needed to evaluate this, the instructions on this one did not say to evaluate these, but if you needed to evaluate these, you should get the same answer for any of these. Uh, as long as you do your integration steps correctly. So it doesn't really matter which one you do. You should get the same answer for any of them. When you do that, again, you just do partial integration from the inside out. You might be able to shortcut it and use some symmetry to think about how some of this maybe could be shortened if you're going to actually evaluate it. I'm just going to write the general one, not with limits of integration. But since our function is a sum of terms, I can actually rewrite my original integral as the triple integral of x dv plus the triple integral of y dv plus the triple integral of z dv. Since my function was just x plus y plus z, I can use summation properties to rewrite that. And if you look at the region and you notice that in that region, for every point in that region that I choose that has a positive y coordinate, there will be a corresponding point that will have a negative y coordinate. So this part of that sum, this part will be zero. And if you recognize that and notice that before you do the integration, you could simplify your work so that you know that you're going to get zero for that part and you really just end up having to evaluate these other two. Okay, we'll look at some more examples in the next videos.